All right, all right. What up, Jesse? What up, man? Been a minute. Dog. Did you know that we haven't put an episode up in over a year before I was like, I want to continue this? It's pretty wild. Right? It was a while before we came back. Well, I came back on because Jesse is on a whole new journey <laughs> and seeing his dreams come true. Yeah. <laughs> So I, I wanted to bring you on to, to update the folks, but also to, to showcase like all the amazing things you've been creating in your life in the last year. And I know while we were recording the podcast, you were in the midst of going through some tough shit. Um, and shortly after that, you're still going through some tough shit, but you started to get closer to the light. <laughs> it, it was productive, productively tough shit productively tough shit so we 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 left the last episode i believe in june of 2021 if i'm not mistaken that feels like a decade ago bro it, it does with all the shifts and changes you've gone through i can only imagine so i definitely wanted to hear you know for folks to hear because you know we talk every week so I, I had a sense of what was going on but hey maybe i'll learn something new today but I, I want to hear from you. You were, you know, you're still in New York. I think, no, you were in Ohio. You were just moving to Ohio. Before in June? This. Now, in June, I was, I was still in New York. Okay, so let's start there. Jesse's still in New York. He's living on his own in that small, like, room, because you rented a room. Mm -hmm. And you were trying to build several things. And in your recent videos, you've been poking at, like, Hey, this is the mistakes I made back then. So, yeah, let's let the let's start with that. Like you made some mistakes, but it was productive mistakes because you learned from them. So, let's start there. I mean, so do you want to pick pick up in June of last year? Yes, sir. Oh man, I mean, it's been it's been an interesting ride. Um, so I'll I'll do the highlights. Yeah, um, it's crazy to think I almost want to go back and listen to that episode just to see where I was at because and I feel like every year I say this to you but I feel like I feel like every year like a decade goes by and because I, I feel like I changed so much um, and my life changes so much but maybe that's also just the season I'm in and there's a lot of change just been happening in my life for the last few years um, but it all kind of feels like one year after a while so june let's see if i can remember so june i was living in queens I was still living in queens uh new york and i was renting a room i had a crazy ass roommate that we had to like call the cops on multiple times because she was harassing me and other other room other people there i had like five roommates um really at the time, I was still working for the Czech Institute, um, and then I was working, I was really doing a lot of freelance work for copywriting and social media. So I was working for them, I was working for a biohacking gym in, uh, in New York, but that was on, I was using an online platform at the time. I was working for a couple of side gigs for, uh, for a homie. Uh, Tony, who was putting me on to a couple side gigs, and um, and I knew still ultimately I wanted to be a coach and do that. And I just I I just still really wasn't clear on how I was going to make that happen. And then um, also at that time I was going through like a twelve week immersion program on some like deep. It was like almost like spirit school. So I was learning like multiple dimensions and how to speak to your higher self and how to connect with your oversoul and how to like really use your inner guidance to take you where you want to go. And I remember in that process, one of the biggest things that came out of that was um, I was so locked into just my own world that at some point. I remember like it got to a point where unless I looked in the mirror, I didn't realize who I was. Mm -hmm. Like my sense of identity be began to really shatter at that time. 
because um, I just didn't, I just didn't know who I was aware of so much of what I was that at some point I was like, I don't even know how to define myself anymore because I exist in all these different realities. So that was probably the biggest thing internally that was going on. Another really, uh, well, and the other thing that had, that kind of started the journey for me now living in Ohio was during that year um, after me and my ex, who I used to talk about on the show quite a lot, Valentina, after we broke up, um, I very quickly stopped masturbating. Like that was my immediate thing. Like I was just like, I'm not going to fall into this trap because I've just watched myself get into a pretty depressive state when I would do that. And at the time I, uh, I was in, I was in men's group. I was in a men's group, leading a men's group. And that was top of mind for everyone. So we all just kind of com started committing to that. I think me and you, we were, were yeah. talking about that at that time too. And that happened. And then shortly, like maybe one or two months later, I got the hit to stop having sex because even though I wasn't masturbating anymore, yeah, I, was still, I was seeing different women and I just began to realize how I was really using it as a crutch to not face myself and to not invest my energy in things that were more important to me. So whether that was starting my own business, whether that was um, just deepening whatever, whatever I was doing at that time, I was just aware of like, oh, I, if you're watching this, you just see my, my puppy. You're on YouTube, you see little Billy Joel. Billy Joel, my little puppy dog. Um, so I, at the time, uh, just realized that like, Oh, I would go for the immediate gratification of being with, with a woman um, than actually focusing and investing my energy in, into what was important. Right. And so I stopped. I stopped having sex. Um, and that was a wild ass journey because um, there, <laughs> I, had no, I've no, I was not accustomed to saying no. You know, right. I, was, I was not, I was not accustomed to being like, nah, I'm not going to see you today. Or like, no, I will not engage with you in that way. And, and in, in that process, I, I felt like I became superhuman or like a Superman, because what is the greatest weakness of most men? Sex. Yep. And the fact that I no longer needed it and pretty much didn't even desire it unless, unless I desired you as a partner it just gave me so much self-control and freedom to really choose in a way that I hadn't before. And then, you know, you were there as you were there on many occasions in my life at these like brink points where I had gone on a date with some girl and it was awful. And it was awful only because I was like, what I realized in that moment was going, you can't even value the man that is sitting in front of you because the consciousness you operate from is not able to see it. Like mm -hmm. you can only project onto me from where you exist. And the fact that we exist in very different places, you can't even see me for who I am. And I remember at the end of that day, at the end of that date, I called you and I was fired the fuck up. I was losing my shit. And I was like, yo, I don't give a fuck anymore. Like, I was like, I just want to be a rock. Like I, I'm done trying to prove myself to women. I'm done. I'm done. I'm done trying to get women to see me for who I am. I just want to exist and have a woman cherish me because she's aware enough to understand who I am. Mm. And you were, you were just lovingly listening. <laughs> that's, that's my role. <laughs> uh, uh, to me. And you're like, yeah, man. Yeah. <laughs> I was just so, I was so lit up. And literally the next day, um, I reach out to someone who has been on the show before yeah. um, and who was our, uh, who was serving as a coach when me, you and I did Next Level all those years ago, um, uh, Natalie, Natalie Barrage. And I remember I initially hit her up because I, um, I just want, I just wanted to talk to a woman who was like, aware enough to, and to have an enjoyable conversation like there was no interest in anything 
Right. I wasn't trying to hit her up sexually or, or, you know, in a flirtatious way. I just wanted to say hi. And pretty immediately um, after our first call, it was like, holy shit, this is a pretty dope person. Um, and the journey that that has, we've went on has been expansive and long and interesting. And that could be three episodes by now. That's another episode. We'll talk <laughs> um, about relationships. Yes. Yep. Uh, but what I'll say is uh, ultimately what ended up happening was uh, pretty quickly um, my lease was ending and I was already booked to go visit her for 10 days. And what we realized was like, oh, maybe, maybe I should just move out there. You know, New York was kind of going into the shitter because of the shutdown. Oh, yeah. And, and back and forth. <laughs> yeah. And so I um, and so I basically was like, yeah, let's move. So, you know, in classic Jesse fashion. Classic Jesse. <laughs> I was just going to say that <laughs> following the show. This is classic Jesse. <laughs> in classic Jesse fashion. I go, yeah, that sounds. Yeah, I should uproot my entire life last minute and move to a state I've never been in with a woman I barely know perfect so that's exactly that's exactly what i did and now we've been in a very loving relationship for all, coming up close to a year now mm -hmm. um and i'm living in ohio and there's a lot that happened after i moved but i figured it might be nice to pause here and if you have any questions or things you want to dig into there yeah i mean one of the things i wanted to pull out was and for folks is you called me and this has happened multiple times, right? The San Diego, which we spoke about on the podcast, we had that conversation that was like, you're, you're, when you live there, you were like, I need to go back to New York. And then before, like, while you were living there, the whole thing with Val happens. Also another big call. I just want to like, and obviously you had, we had the men's group. And I think during that June month, if I'm not gonna say, oh no, it was May, we had the, um, we all went to Pennsylvania. I came out to New York and it was you, me, Nikita, and a few other guys that went to a cabin and we did a whole weekend thing. And I just wanted to talk about the importance of that because I think whether you're a woman or a man, it's just having that, that outlet. Like you're like, dude, I need to talk to you. And even though like I sat there on the phone just listening to you lovingly because I knew you didn't need that advice. You just needed you just needed to get it out <laughs> you know? and to have Absolutely. someone to call like the importance of that, because a lot of people are, I, I, I don't think it's only men. I think it's women too, that deal with this loneliness and they don't know who to talk to and they don't know who to go to, but all you need is that one friend. And I, I'd love to hear, like, maybe if you remember, like when we got off that call, like what was going through your mind as, you know, from, you know, being in a bad day, to like, what do I do now? Like, this is it. I'm going to stop going out with these women, wasting my time. Well, I mean, one, I think it was just really nice to talk very fr frankly with another man um, because I just, I was kept it very, very, very aggressively real with you um, about how I felt. And you didn't really, you knew that even though I was saying crazy shit on that call, you know, I didn't mean the crazy shit I was saying. Right. I meant the energy it was coming from. Mm -hmm. You know, and, and you I think that too. I remember you saying that. Yeah. And I think that's, you know, when we look at cancel culture today, it's unfortunate because people, people have become inc incredibly literal in, right. for some odd fucking reason where they think like people talk because they mean every word they say. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but oftentimes you, we talk for comedic relief or we talk for, you know, driving a point home or we just like the, the fucking sound of certain words coming out of our face um, and it relieves the stress. Um, and so I was saying wild ass shit on the fucking call, I remember. And um, it was nice to, once we got off of that, to just be like, yeah, you know, because I'm definitely someone who learns, uh, learns as I speak. Right. So like, I'll learn more about myself as I talk about myself. A true um, teacher, bro. A true teacher. Yes. So <laughs> yeah. So that is. Um. I. I remember. I. I became highly, highly. I just became more confident in what I was choosing and what I was aware of, 
And I honestly think if I didn't have the opportunity to make that call, I, I don't know if I would have made the you know stamp of of uh, of approval in that direction moving forward. Right. And from that men's group, I mean, you decided to like not move forward with that one. And then we started the identity project. And that was like a, a multiple month long thing mm -hmm. where you, you were living in Ohio, you started living with Natalie, but then you moved into your own space for a little bit of time yeah. to really focus. And that was during the time we were doing the identity project. At least we were building up the brand um, during that time, but you started working at Lifestyle Fitness. So there are a lot lifetime. of like moving lifetime, lifetime lifestyle, <laughs> um, lifetime fitness. And there were like a few pieces that was going on. And obviously folks that are hearing this probably did see us, mm -hmm. you know, come out with the identity project. And eventually I want to move to like why we dismantled it. And mm -hmm. I think a big chunk of this is going to be why and like the avenues we've decided to go mm -hmm. on. Mm -hmm. So where would you like me to begin? Yeah, the identity project. Like we came up with that. I mean, you were like a, 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 a driving force in it. And I was like, kind of like that support character, you can say. <laughs> um, but you drove it. Natalie came up with the name for us, right? And like, yeah, Natalie did. what was like your, I mean, obviously I had my perception of where we wanted to take it, but what was like your vision for it? Well, I think before even the identity project what was going on was I knew like big picture what was happening for me was I was at Lifetime I was still working for the Czech Institute so I'm working a 40 hour a week job and then on top of that I'm working like 20 to 25 hours part-time for the Czech Institute so my and I'm like you know I have all these expenses that are racking up because I don't have a car so I'm Ubering everywhere and that's like just a insane a wonderful amount of debt I put myself in um I'm you know there's just a lot of expenses that come along with moving somewhere new you know they just have a lot of which you can't even plan for or just different I've uprooted in my entire life so so many things were changing and I was doing that and I, I just knew I was like, yo, I can't fucking do this. Like, I can't, I don't, I, I can not have a fucking job anymore. You know what I mean? Like, I just knew that it I didn't even matter if I was doing what I loved. I knew that um, I had to be on my own terms, being my own man um, uh, and driving my own ship forward in the world. Um, particularly with my career, I think, I think that shows up differently for different men in different ways. But I knew for me specifically, I was like, I'm a hard headed motherfucker. And I like what I like. And I like to see it my way. And I just at some point, I just, I just had to accept that, you know. Okay. Um, and also, you know, all, all throughout all the these freaking years for anyone who's been listening this that long. I mean, it's been how long have we been talking about coaching? and creating that you know? years yeah like four years now so um so i just was like you know at, at some point you gotta shit or get off the pot you know what i mean like right. it, it's one of those so um so i think originally our our we had a pretty big dream for the identity project um and what i know be i know before the identity project i was working on i had like this whole like fat loss coach thing that I was driving forward and I just I really didn't connect with it um and it, it really did not fuel me for what I you know wanted to to be in the world um um so you had something that you wanted yes you really had in mind so obviously I was doing the men's fat loss coach thing and I was trying to get it out there but my heart really wasn't in it because I was like yes can I help you with fat loss absolutely but is that is that what is what dr is drives me to create in the world and the and the change that I want to see in the world is just a bunch of people that are not fat. No, that's <laughs> I want that to be a byproduct of other things. Right. And so, um, and so you know we got to talking, and I I at the time still desired to create something that was oriented around men, 
And we just, you know, we, we just saw this possibility, you know, we were both guys who truly lived a holistic life, you know, where we cared for our relationships and we cared for our bodies and we cared for our minds and we were incredibly open with each other and have explored our emotions and have explored our aggression. So it just felt like a natural thing to be like, oh yeah, why, why shouldn't this exist in the world? Right. And that's, and that's kind of like how I saw it, like how much men can we help? And like one man we help will eventually lead to another. And over time, you know, there was a lot that we put into it. Like you put in like so much work, we created like an ebook, we did all these things. And then you're like, I need, my path is going somewhere else. And like, we had a really deep discussion around like our path, like you even asking me, and kind of, this is what's great about having a friend as a coach, right? Both ways, like, right? Like they pretty much coach you into being like, is this really what you want to do? And I remember when we had that conversation, I was like, actually, I don't think coaching is, is for me at this moment. Like there's something else I want to go and pursue. And it's just part of my creative and the way I work. And then you were like, I want to do my own thing, which is what you've been doing now. So now leading to the present, like you- well, I love, I think it'd be great for the audience to hear, because that was a deep conversation. Um, uh, and I, you know, you, you got very emotional in that process. So I think it'd be nice to, for the audience to kind of hear what, what happened from your end and how you took it and, and what you, what you've chosen to create with it. Yeah, of course. I think that when it came to the coaching aspect, there was something about doing it one-to-one while I still love it, you know, to this day, I still like on my own time for just a few people, two people at the moment, like monthly calls just to chat and see where they're at, like, and then help them in that way. And they're both women. So it's not like, I was like, I want to move. Cause I started to realize like men need help. I know that, like, we know that. But then at the same time, I'm like, well, women need help as well. We need to come together if we want to the human race to continue and we don't go to war and kill each other right like it need, it requires both of us um and after like we were doing it and i felt that like to be honest we didn't align like we lost yeah. that like something yeah. happened right whether in the ether in the universe and i started noticing like you were really doing very well and like going your route and i i was like i i actually don't know what i needed to do and I remember we jump on a call and you really start asking me the questions and what you do for folks that don't know is the access consciousness. Um, and we'll explain it shortly, just a quick like synopsis, but great book that we read on it. And I think it, it's extremely powerful stuff. And Natalie talks about it in our podcast with her. So I'll link that in the, in the show notes. But when you started asking those questions and asking me what my truth is and like digging because we try to wear a face, right? Like mm-hmm. if you're not like people speaking, you majority, you probably work a job, you go into that job, you throw a mask on. Cause you're not going to be like, if you'd be a hundred percent, people will be like, Oh, he's weird. Or she's weird. She's this, she's that. You start feeling those judgments. So it was like, am I wearing a mask? Because I say in coaching, am I hiding out on what I truly wanted to do? Mm-hmm. And as you started to dig into the layers of the onion, <sighs> started realizing like fuck this is really not what I should post on I got emotional because like for many years um I was many people told me like coaching seems so right for you you do it so well right but I'm like at the end of the day I was told that I should be a teacher and a teacher while has coaching aspects a teacher is someone that expresses like they bring all these ideas and thoughts together and help like you know um what is it condense them right we condense them and then we help share it in a way that helps people understand it better Mm -hmm. and you know I read a ton of books and you you start asking me questions about that and I came to the conclusion that I just want to create right and started with writing I do want to write a book one day that's kind of like where I feel like my purpose is leading me to so it's like well I also like to create videos and like through that conversation I felt like storytelling, content creation was kind of like my jam. Like that's where I need to be and share. 
which is why I got back to the podcast and I was trying to figure out what that's going to look like. So it took me a few months. I had to sit on my ass and stuff um, to try to like really be like, what do I want to do with this? Like what's calling to me the most, right? And, and still going through that process, um, right? Like whatever feels the most true is where I'm going to go. And something that actually came up recently was, hey, your path is to speak, write, and your family. Like that's your three. Like that, you get three things to focus on. These are going to be the things that take up the most of your time. And that all stemmed from that conversation we had of just like, what is your truth? Like, and don't lie, like you kept digging. Like you didn't go for the first answer. You didn't go for the second answer. You kept digging in with, and it was the same question asked differently to make sure that like my ego and whatever is going on in my brain was going to get out the way. Mm -hmm. And that's the whole notion for folks out there. And it's like, oh, you just need to get out of your own way. And I think I was in my way saying like, no, we need to do this coaching thing. This is where, what we're doing because we've been doing it for so long. We've created a story around it. So many people know this is what you want to do. Mm -hmm. If you tell everyone that you're not going to do this, you're going to be so hurt. People are going to be like, of course, Ruben always jumps from thing to thing. Mm -hmm. But I can tell y'all one thing that I respect most about Jesse is that he does not give a fuck. Like <laughs> Jesse tries things and is like, it didn't work. I'm going on to the next thing. No, nope. if people judge him, doesn't care like keeps going and i think um that's what i've admired about you since i've known you like mm. you've moved through these and look like now you're like getting so close mm -hmm. and the success is showing and you're like i'm like holy shit like jesse's been speaking his truth mm. all these years that's why it probably feels like every year feels like 10 for you because you're like getting so close to that so like you know, shifting it back on to you and like where, when that conversation started, we decided to, you know, hey, the identity project, we'll, we'll shelf it. This could be something in the future possibly, but for now we need to go on our own routes and see where that takes us. And then eventually that will come back and we'll, but the root is there. We just gotta let it be for a little bit, mm -hmm. right? So that's kind of like where I went, which is why y'all- Yeah, so- I mean, and, you know, just to affirm all that, like, I've always seen you like that, because, you know, I look at, I look at who inspires you, the, like, it's interesting, when we look at the people who inspire us, because there, there are particular people in your world that I, that may inspire me as well, but I see the way they inspire you, and I'm like, oh, yeah, it's because he's meant to be like them, like, you look like at a, at a Ryan Holiday, or Robert Green or Mark Manson, it's like, who are these people? They're all that archetype. They're they're writers, they're speakers, they're they're authors of their of their lives, and they may very much speak in the turn in a scholastic way. They're very right. book oriented and knowledge based in that way. And they and, and you enjoy it. You know, it's like I like reading, but I don't fucking like reading the way you like reading. <laughs> <laughs> and I remember when I when I realized that at some point, like I was just like, oh shit, Ruben reads different than me. <laughs> like, I, like I like I thought I had a good reading ethic, but I was like, nah, this motherfucker like reads a lot all the time, you know, and you enjoy it. And it's just it's just different, you know, but it's awesome and it's beautiful. And it, and I think it's also beautiful for people to hear that like it, us shifting what we were creating together actually created more for both of us mm. you know and i think because we ultimately wanted what was best for our friendship and for us as people rather than you know this idea of, of a thing um and so for me what what kind of drove that 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 awareness of like oh, i think i actually need to move away from this and, and go you know two feet into what i was doing outside of it I had a very interesting experience because I was working at Lifetime, which is a gym, but two thirds of my clients were energy work clients. Like I, these are, I was literally working with these people on like, you know, alcohol addiction and, you know, pain from, you know, having people die in their lives and, you know, in the inability to express them, their truest selves. And these are like just people in fucking Ohio 
<laughs> are approaching me um, at a fucking fitness gym about this stuff because I just talk about it. And I was, so I was having a surplus of all people from all different walks of life start having just the wildest, you know, results and experiences through this work I was doing with them that it, it started to really make me realize like, oh, wow, like I really have a special skill here for me to, to put out there in the world. And then on top of that, you know, I had my virtual clients that I was seeing that were starting to have pretty amazing results in their lives as well. And I was like, yo, I think I really fucking got something here. Like if I close one or two more clients, I'm like, I'm, I'm ready to go. Like I'm ready to do my thing because I was, I'm, you know, my rates are high. So I was just like, yeah, here we fucking go. And I had just been, it was just at that precipice where I was like, yo, I can't fucking stop. Like I just have to fucking go. And, I, and it was true, it really was the case because I was work like I said, I was working 40 hours at Lifetime. I was working 20 to 25 hours. So it's like almost like 65 hours with the check institute. I would literally work during the week. And then on my two days off, I would, I would pull 10 hour days for the check institute. Like, so like imagine like you come home and I worked a commission based job. So it's not like a gig where like, yeah, I can kind of like slack off and like work for the check institute while, you know, you know, people, people have those types of gigs. I've had those types of right. gigs in the past. I know that reality where like you can kind of multitask because your job is, is very, how do you say, like, based. Yeah. say that again? Salary based. So like, you salary know, salary based, but also task to... oriented. Oh yeah. Yeah. It's task oriented. So meaning like if I get X, Y, Z done, then that's all that matters. And I know what I'm getting paid commission based. It's like, there's always something to fucking do because your, your income is literally dependent on your performance. So I'm doing that. I'm working for the, um, so then I get off right after five days of that. And then for two days in a row, I'm working 10 hours. And then on top of that, I'm, I'm discovering how <laughs> to bring more clients into my business, but to be, you know, I remember when I would hear hard workers talk about that type of thing. And it would, I would shit my pants because I would be like, that's fucking insane. I'm never doing that. But what I did not realize was an important piece to all of this was the actual joy of having what it is you're going after. And the in like almost psychotic belief that you can have it. Like it required me to become a fucking psycho to believe that I could achieve, achieve what I, what I desired. Um, uh, Cause I remember I had a friend uh, one time we were going on a hike, one of my friends out here and he's like, dude, you're fucking fringe. And, and I, and at first I got offended. Cause I was like, I was like, what do you mean? I'm fringe. He says, you just like, fuck it. He's like, he's like, he's like, I'm fringe. Cause he was a personal trainer. Right. So he's like, I'm fringe, like I'm out there on like the career path and like ex and like existence thing. But like you with your fucking energy coaching, like you're fucking way, way out there. And I laughed, but then I kind of like, I like felt empowered by it because I was like, holy shit, I didn't even realize that like the trajectory of the life I've chosen to have is way, way, way out on the outskirts of like majority of existence. And, I, and ultimately it doesn't really mean anything other than what I make it mean, which is just like, man, I really fucking took a chance on me. All right. So you went on this hike. He was telling you about your energy work and how you're on the outskirts. And then we have to pause real quick. But that's well, what I left it at was just going like, what I made it mean to me was that like, fuck, I took a chance on myself. I really took a chance myself so far in my life and continue to do pretty every single day mm. to create create what i desire so that was pretty epic and that you know has which is great that we're doing this podcast because we actually have not talked about some of the more recent developments in my internal existence i mean you've been seeing me put out more stuff but other than that there's been a lot of stuff 
doing its thing inside of me that I'd love to, to, to talk about as well when we get there. Yeah, of course. And I think you, um, you having these realizations and I, I wanted to ask like all of this was just little moments, right? There were no like really, were there any really big moments that really like kind of slapped you in the face or were they just like, Oh yeah, absolutely. Wrinkles? throughout when you started realizing like oh i need to really go in this and then you know bet on myself 100 percent. there were there were some moments that were more like that was the time where things shifted mm -hmm. and i'll share those but when you what i do want what i would love to share about when you talk about like the trinkles the interesting thing about the trinkles and this is what i'm starting i'm starting to learn now is that if you're not having trinkles, you're not going hard enough. Mm. Like if you're not constantly having new awarenesses of your evolution or having to, to engage with doubt or engage with confusion or engage with um, what the next step is, that means you're not, you're not moving fast enough. That's what I'm really starting to get. If you get, if you are at a point in your life where it's like nothing's bad, but nothing's really that good, it's kind of just like, yeah, like life is existing or like things are good. Like, let's just say like, oh, things are just good. You know, like life's pretty good. Mm -hmm. um, oftentimes when people say that, the, even in the way that, yeah, life's, life's good. There's not a lot of joy in that expression because it's almost like it's a weird fucking thing being a person <laughs> but oh, yeah. also being a man i think because i'm assuming a lot of men listen to this and you know there, i'm sure there's a version of this for women but i'll speak to men because i am a man and, and it's i think sometimes the easiest thing to relate to which is there's this weird thing that like I start, if life becomes too, uh, I don't really use the word easy because I think we should all have, I think we should all have ease in our lives, right? So like, I'm not a big believer in like, I need to fucking punish myself to like earn the right to be happy. I don't believe in that. I think what I'm really trying to communicate is there's a level of commitment to your existence an awareness around your death or you're like like oh shit this is like all right, my one shot like i've got one shot at this fucking thing right. like, i may have multiple shots in different forms over multiple lifetimes but in this form i've got one fucking shot and knowing that that exists for us there's a level of commitment that's available to all of us that when we choose it it becomes incredibly uncomfortable, but it also becomes incredibly enlivening because it forces you to constantly check in on who you're being. Mm -hmm. And when life is cozy, because uh, on one hand, it's like your life can suck, but that's kind of a gift because when your life sucks, you are forced to like figure shit out. You're forced to like be a person or become worse. You know, it's like one or the other, but when life is like good, you know, but it's not great. That's the problem. That's, that's the scary part is, yeah, I've been saying this a lot lately. Um, and I put out a YouTube video about this is like, uh, hot, I put out a YouTube video the other day of like three steps to go from good to great. And it's not because I've necessarily hit greatness, but I'm really starting to become aware of like what's required for me to hit greatness. Mm. And one of the greatest quotes I've ever heard is the enemy of the great is the good. And it's true. Because a good life is, pro is, a, is a scary life to have because you never truly, great comes with risk, high risk, high reward. Great comes with that fucking, you know, uh, that, those tears in your eyes when, you, when you've accomplished something that you've worked so goddamn fucking long for. And you're just like, man, I can't believe I have all this choice in my life. I can't believe I can be this person, have these things and have had all these experiences. But when you live a good life, a good life is typically you're existing somewhere in a, in a bubble of 
other people's expectations of you and what makes you feel good about yourself. There's some sort of like ratio there where you go, oh, like I, I feel, I don't feel like a sack of shit about this. And like other people think I'm like relatively doing okay. So that must mean I have a good life. Like that's how people judge a good life. Right. That's why most people who say they have a good life have the life that other people who say they have a good life have. It's a very consistent type of story, right? De- depending on what world you're in. But a great fucking life. A fucking great life is unique. Like you can't, you can't um, mimic greatness. That's why it's great. Greatness is unique. Greatness is very, very it's much its own story. That what that's what makes it great is going. That person has created something that has never been seen before, or has never been seen before in that way. And this is why, right, we admire people like Michael Jordan, Tiger Woods, like all the greats that like their names are global phenomenons because mm-hmm. they're so unique in their in their given industry, mm-hmm. whatever that is. Right. And that that's kind of like what you're seeing in but to a greater extent, like mm-hmm. for the people, for the world, like what are you? great in in your space Mm -hmm. right is that where you're kind of going exactly exactly and and also it's like for you to have a great life this is one of the things i talked about in the video is like you have to always be having a better life or you always you have to always be having a better performance the only way you can get to greatness is by always be always getting to better if i'm always getting to better every day then i eventually I ultimately will become great. It, it is inevitable. It is inevitable for that to happen. But how many days do we just, how many days do any of us ever just go, oh, I'll get to it tomorrow? Oof. You know, or like, it's fine. I'll pick it up to, I'll, I'll, I'll pick it up next time. You know, and, and what you don't realize is, you're not necessarily talking about when I hear people say that, and I've said this myself, you're not ta- or like, you know, yesterday was my, yesterday was my birthday. I just, you know, it was a time to slack off. So like, I'll, I'll get to it today. And what that tells me, and this isn't a judgment because I've, I've done the same shit and I would be surprised if I never do it again, truthfully. The thing about those types of ideas is they stem from a place of audacity. Like you have the audacity to believe that you can have the luxury to just fucking, oh, that was just a write-off day. Like, I'm just going to write that day off, right? Because I can always pick it up tomorrow. You're not realizing the big picture. You're not realizing like the person you are today, the opportunity cost of today is with you only for today. What the magic that is in the air for you to to culminate and have happen and everyone who's ready to be part of that process today can only fucking happen today and every day you don't do that you are fucking yourself Mm -hmm. and on top of that you know i very i I don't believe in like a competitive mindset necessarily because it can become very toxic very fast but to illustrate a point the reality of things is is going like there are other fucking people that desire what you desire at a very high level. And if you think that you are so fucking good that you could just, you can decide that, oh, today I'm just going to fucking do it this way because right. I just can is a farce. Like you're full of shit and it's okay if you're full of shit, but just know you're full of shit. Just to know that like you are, you're not just setting yourself a day behind because you'll likely do it again. And all the days that you do that compound versus all the days people who really are fucking going after greatness don't do it, you'll never catch up with them. You'll never fucking catch up with them. And therefore, you'll always be fucking left behind. And you'll never have the opportunity to even be the person you desire to be. Mm. And just to, because I'm I'm thinking of what probably people will think of that. Like, So if you have to get it done today because the opportunity presents itself, the magic is in the air, right? But say someone says to you, but there's so much, there's not enough time. All these excuses that, you know, it's the average excuse, right? There's not enough time. 
I work an eight hour job, sometimes 10 hours. And then I have to do all these other things. But I know I want to get to that, but I just don't have the capacity. By the time I get to it, I'm too exhausted. Like, what do you say to that person? Mm -hmm. I say to that person a couple of things. One, you likely are not clear on what it is you're trying to achieve. Mm. Because the fact, it shouldn't be so much. If you think you have a lot to do, that means you have no idea what to do, right? Be, for example, what I've distilled my existence to right now is I am in the process of becoming a Greek god in, in, in my physical form, right? <laughs> so fitness, health and fitness. My next thing is marketing, building a brand. And my third thing is building a, a business, building products, building an automated business. Those are the three things that exist in my life right now. I have family. I have my loved ones. I have, you know, I have the day-to-day -day monotony. I have my current clients and things I'm working on. But when I look at what are the three things that if I'm always working on them and getting better at them, I will have everything I want. It's those three things. So, but then you take those three things and then you go, okay, well, what does that actually mean? So for example, for me, uh, fitness, becoming a Greek god. What does that actually mean? That means I'm eating in this certain way. I have a plan. I have a plan of eating this way is going to get me to this. And I'm training a certain way because training this way is going to get me to this. So as long as I eat that way and train that way every day, that's all I need to do to get to where I need to go. Number two, marketing. Okay. I need to create X amount of content every day across multiple platforms. That's all that it is. I have to create a certain amount of content that is distributed every day across multiple platforms. That's all I need to do. The last thing is product and business. I need to, right now I need to build certain products that I then will start promoting through my marketing efforts, right? So those, that's it. That's it. And, 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 and then from there, you, you scale it down even more because you go, okay, well, to achieve those things, the content, the fitness, the nutrition, the product, what are the fucking main things I need to do to like, what is the, what are the main things that I need to do that will bring me the most results in those areas? And how can I schedule or how can I create a schedule around my life to ensure I always get those things done? That's the first thing I, I'd have them do is get crystal fucking clear on what it is you're trying to achieve and everything, everything you need to do to make it happen and get rid of everything else. Just fucking forget about it. The second thing that I would say to them about the exhaustion is one, if you're not taking care of your health, I don't want to fucking hear it. Like get your fucking health together. That's numero uno. And it, and it does not take any more time and effort than not taking care of your health. Right. It's the same either way. The amount of time you spend buying your food is the same amount of time I spend buying my food. I just go to a different place to buy it. All right. The amount of time um, you spend on Instagram or fucking off or watching TV is the same amount of time I spend in the gym. The same amount of time. Well, you, what, what is relaxing to you or uh, uh, kind of rejuvenating for you is rejuvenating for me. It's just in a different way. I'd rather go fucking hit a deadlift than watch Peaky Blinders, even though I love Peaky Blinders because it's a great show, but that's a different point. So that would be my first thing. The second thing I would say, the third thing I would say about all of that is you have to set a new standard for yourself. Mm. And you have to you have to realize that if if you are asking for greatness, because you don't have to ask for it, you can fucking live. You and I don't mean this like rhetorically, like you can literally go. If you have a job that pays you well and you have a family that loves you and you enjoy what you do and you enjoy being there for your family, you're fucking golden. Like you don't need, you don't need to chase a hundred million dollars. You don't need right. to chase a worldwide impact. You don't need to chase right. any of those things. But if that is what you desire, 
which is what I desire, right? And it was one of those things that like, I can't help it. And you know, like, you know, if you're that person, if you just literally can't fucking help it. Like if you, if you can't help, if that is an itch, an insatiable itch that you just always think about scratching of just being this like massive fucking impact in the world or in your world or whatever niche, I don't need to, I don't need the whole world to know me. I just need my world to know me. You know what I mean? I just desire my, my world and what I, my message to be out there and to be creating what I create. And I want a lot of fucking dope shit in my life. I want to do a lot of fun things. I want to build a legacy. If you are that person, then the conversation you have to have with yourself is that you cannot have exceptional results without exceptional effort. Right. You can't. So what that means is you, you, what has gotten you to the life that everyone else has is doing what everyone else does. To get to the life that very few people have, you have to do what very few people do. So that means if that you do have enough time, you're just not choosing to create more time because you're likely getting up around 7, 8 a.m. You know, most people are getting up around 7, 8 a.m. because they need to be at work, meaning at their fucking kitchen table by nine o'clock. So they have enough time to piss shit, brush their teeth, put on some clothes, comb their hair, have some breakfast, and here you fucking go. Okay. But if you decide to have be great, then you should wake up at 4 a.m., <laughs> 4 30 a.m. and get as much done before your work day. So by the end of it, you've only got, and then when work ends, you've got another two to three hours to get more done. And you you stack, and then on the weekends, you're not doing fucking jack shit in but working on your shit. That just is what it is. Like that's actually what's required is you you break your ass off as hard as you can till you're making enough money or, uh, where you can control more of your time. And then when you can control more of your time, you triple, quadruple, quintuple the fuck down on it and kick it up to a level of thousand. And then when you have more money, you leverage that money to do X, Y, Z, other things. Money just gives you more access to time. That's really what the game you're playing, yeah. you know? Yeah. So if you don't have time, then you, then you have no choice but to create more time, meaning that other things that you're spending that time with to relax or to enjoy yourself or to check out can no longer be part of that process. You have to let those things go, which is very true for me. I've had to let... I. I me and my girlfriend have not been to a dinner date in a very long time. In a very long time. In months. In months. We have not gone on a dinner date. And we likely won't for a while. And, on, and for her birthday, we will not be going on a dinner date. Because I'm in the process of becoming a Greek god. And fortunately, you know, my girlfriend has done a show before, like a bodybuilding show before. So she, she gets it. And she's incredibly supportive. Like, like. If there's anything I could recommend to any man out there is find a woman who fucking gets you. And, and if you are someone like myself or Ruben who desires to be fucking exceptional, then you have to, you must be with a woman who understands your desire to be exceptional. She has to understand that. And if she does, life is fucking golden That's because it. she loves you for your commitment and she cherishes every, the time you are with her. And when you are not, she understands that she, you are doing it for, for the family and for the future. Exactly. So, yeah. Rant over. <laughs> I love I mean, I how, on and on, but yeah. I love how passionate you got there. Um, it just shows that you are truly going the route um, that you're meant to go on. And I've been seeing your videos, dude, and they've been, the quality is like top notch, not only about like the quality, but also the content is top notch. And I can only imagine the amount of value you're bringing to your clients right now. And I know you're, you're focusing on other things and creating that automatic stuff to support more people at a, you know, decent price. Cause Hey, you you have value, right? So you charge that value, and yeah, you're, it's not cheap, but like the value, it's exceptional. And I get it, you know. I see it as a friend, you know what <laughs> I mean. I'm like shit, like 
you know, like people that aren't paying for this, that Jesse, the skill set that Jesse has built over the last, what, six years, you've been really like hammering home, like everything you've tried, everything you've done, all the jobs you've taken on, like all of this has been leading to this mm -hmm. one thing. Mm -hmm. And it's so funny because when we're there, we don't realize that where it's going to lead. But, you know, in hindsight, which is always 2020, mm -hmm. you kind of see that beauty. So, you know, I fucking respect everything you're doing. What you're talking about right now is I think where most people are starting to realize they're starting to open up their minds. I think COVID was an amazing, you know, and horrible thing and amazing at the same time, because I think it unlocked a lot of things for a lot of people. And now people are more willing to accept these ideas back then they would have known that's woo woo or that's this that's that but i'm pretty sure you i mean you live in ohio and you have clients <laughs> you know like me and karina make fun of ohio like a lot because we're like well who lives there <laughs> like bro it's a good vibe out here homie <laughs> but um i'm excited that you're kicking ass and you know um i know i'm doing the podcast solo so but, you know, hopefully to bring you on every every few weeks or so just to kind of get updates because your life moves at some insane, <laughs> insane ways. Um, <laughs> and I know that's something that you create based on like everything you said, like you're putting in that work, you have your head down and you're getting it done. Um, well, that's that is actually, I would say, funny because I had a conversation with myself. One, of, I have many conversations with myself all the time, but some no, of the no. some of the recent conversations <laughs> I've had with myself was like, where in my life do I get to make this the last time? It's the first time. Mm. What a question! Look at that. I miss <laughs> Jesse's questions, y'all. <laughs> <laughs> like, what, when, what, what are some things in my life that I can make this the last time? It's the first time. Mm. You know. And because the pro side, like, as you know, like the pro side of the way I've been in the world is I don't give a shit and I'm happy to try new things and fail at them and try again and fucking fail and fail and fail and fail until something fucking hits. And I'm like, ah, that, and then I'll chase that for as long as I need to until ah, that, but the con is it's when we talk about greatness, gr greatness is really only able to occur after a long exhaustive period of monotony like there is a level of monotony to becoming great that's the reason you become great is because you do foundational things that are very very high level because you've become incredibly skilled at them right and so i looked at that and i it really was the three things that i said well really the two main things that i said which was business and my fitness and the third thing was my roots. Like I need to be rooted. You know, I need, I need to stop thinking short term, where am I going to be? Because when I'm half, when I have hundred millions of dollars, motherfucker, I could be anywhere. I can right. go anywhere, anytime. But like, I've realized like, okay, to get to hundred million dollars is not going to be by any means overnight. Um, it's not going to be within a year. It may not even be within two five years maybe within five years knowing myself because i can create shit in a pretty fucking magical way but maybe not maybe not five years i have to be i have to be willing to have aggressive patience towards this dream right and so i have literally shut out like you know the grass is greener syndrome i have shut it out almost to like a like it, almost to like a an, an ignorant way where I go these are the things I'm focusing on and other than these things I don't fucking I don't exist I don't exist in any other idea of myself other than these things I don't exist until I have because life is long like life is actually really fucking long and if it takes me five years to become a fucking master at mark at marketing at family well, family, I don't know if I'll ever become a master. I think that's an ongoing process. But if I become a master at my fitness, like I'm fucking master, like God level fucking abilities in physique and just all the things there, God level mastery in, in business, 
uh, and marketing, if I fucking just become epic at that in the next five years, the things that I can then start to explore, I can explore them in a real way and leverage what I've gained in these areas to the next. You know, so I think it's just growing up <laughs> and learning that like slow is steady and steady is fast. Mm-hmm. You know, they talk about that in jujitsu and in martial arts. It's like slow is steady, steady is fast. Like, like it's- when we were kids, they talk about the rabbit and turtle story, mm-hmm. right? Like that's a traditional story around that. Yeah. So for me, it's and my pup. I love my my doggy who's fucking crazy and we had to take him out of the room. But um yeah. So that's it. You know, my life has become in, it, beautifully boring. Like it my life has become beautifully fucking boring. I do the same shit every day on routine, same times every day. And it's fucking great. It's fucking great. I could not be happier. I could be happy. I could be happier with more money. But how that's get, well. How does it get better than this? Which is a question. How does it get better than that? Exactly. So Jesse, um, all this amazing things you said. I obviously want to ask one final question, and then maybe this will become a, a another podcast. But mm-hmm. what is something that outside of all of this that you're talking about? What is something that I've been like? itching your brain so something you've been pondering thinking Mm. about that's just outside of the realm of health and fitness you know your business like is it something in the world is it Mm. something that personal like relationship like what is something that you've that's been kind of itching at you lately so i will uh, uh that's a great question and uh i won't I won't explain all the details because it's kind of private to what's going on in my family. Yeah. Uh, and we could talk about it off screen. Offline. Yeah. But um, there has been some things that have gone on in my family recently that have been pretty intense. And one of the things you had, and it made me, it has made me quite, there was especially one evening where I got very, very emotional about it. And, um, it was one of those moments where I just realized that like, oh, there's some things in life that just don't make sense. (laughs) You know, like it was just, it was just, it was one of those moments that I was just like, oh, wow. Like there are just some things, you know, in your life that will happen that just will not make linear sense. And they will also not make like, higher purpose sense in a way you know what i mean like because there's some things you can like deduce to like oh there's a higher reason for this like everything happens for a reason but there's some shit that happens where you're like i don't really fucking see the reason for this you know and i didn't and i wasn't even mad about it i was more just like hmm like that's like i feel like that's like a corner of the universe that is it's there's so much there to explore because it's a very simple statement like oh some things don't happen for a reason but like why like why do some things not happen for a reason um and i think that has been that is something i have been looking at um requires further thought further thought and and the last thing which definitely can be a different podcast is part of that moment i re- i felt this almost like universal core wound be- i became aware of you know and it's like you know you're you're obviously very invested in this as well which is like we are very much a fatherless generation oh, dude you know what i mean that's like, a whole nother conversation we but even have. but even more than a fatherless generation Actually, this is this is this was the thing that came through because this actually reads stronger for me. It's not even that we're a fatherless generation, but we're it's like it's like the generation of being nobody's son. Oof. That that is what has been coming up for me. Like I've thought about actually writing a book called Nobody's Son mm. or the generation of nobody's son, because it's not just like having a 
not having a father, like having a father, but not not having him as like a true father figure. What I've realized is it goes even farther. We're like many of the men, all the guys in our men's group have a non-existent relationship with their family. Like barely any, or like they do, but it's almost like, oh, here's my family. And then here's me. Yep. You know what I mean? It's like, here's the family that I came from. And then me. And it's like, oh yeah, they, they just like exist as like a as like a thing in my world, as like a functioning, semi-functioning thing in my world. And then there's like the life I'm trying to build. Mm. Very much with like myself and nothing else. Mm. And you know, I think that is I uh, just I think that's very interesting. And 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 almost and also the the such a deep desire for so many of us men to create a different story like on a cosmic level that makes me very interested because you look two generations ago and it was like almost the opposite story where like the father figure was so dominant in the household, you know, and the parents were so controlling in the household that it almost went like the next generation wanted nothing to do with that. So they were like, we're not even going to fucking raise our children. (laughs) You know what I mean? mean? Cycles. And and yeah, it's like they went from like being like told everything to fucking do to now we won't do anything and then it's like and now we're just you know really just creating our own stories so that has been two of the most interesting things in my mind lately Oof, that's powerful and this that's why i wanted you to say that because this it leaves people with something to think about and that's what i want like think about that like under ponder 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 and that's the reason why i call it this so Thanks, brother. Thank you so much for jumping on the show with me um, and having all this crazy like life story, just one year that feels like 10 um, and us go through it and provide all this value for well, I can't say it's my audience. It was it's our audience, you know, so thank you so much, brother. Um, I appreciate it. And I can't wait till you come back on. Oh, yeah. Thank you for carrying the torch forward, man. I'm I'm really excited to see what you what you create with this pod, dude. Yeah, yeah. Y'all I, see. Y'all see. <laughs> all right, y'all. Thank you for listening. And all of Jesse's socials and everything will be in the show notes below. So you can find them on all platforms. All right. Yes, sir. Peace. Peace.